Well, an obvious attempt to place political pressure on Canada. That's how Prime Minister Justin Trudeau characterizes the imprisonment of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, who are now charged with spying by the Chinese. China is hitting hard at the Prime Minister, alleging his remarks about the matter, specifically linking the detainments with the arrest of the Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou on that extradition case are, in the Chinese government's words, irresponsible, and that the two cases are, quote, completely different. Today, the U.S. Secretary of State, though, Mike Pompeo, backed Canada, saying, quote, these charges are politically motivated and they are completely groundless. The United States stands with Canada in calling on Beijing for the immediate release of the two men and we rejects the use of these unjustified detentions to coerce Canada. What should Canada do to hit back against the charges? Let's bring in MPs here to discuss. Rob Oliphant is a Liberal MP, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Garnet Genius is a Conservative MP and the party's... Uh, critic for Canada-Chinese relations, and Jack Harris is an NDP MP from Newfoundland and the party's foreign affairs critic. Good to see you all. I hope you're all well and your families are well, and I'm going to start with you, Mr. Oliphant. Um, the Prime Minister's comments today, he's, he's not backing down, but let's be candid. Nothing that Canada has done has done anything to release the two Michaels. One thing that may show some more spine than just rhetoric is rejecting Huawei for Canada's 5G. Is that on the table? Uh, let, let's start out by saying that there is no uh, issue, no uh, concern greater for us than the well-being of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver, and our persistent and dogged um, attempts to make sure that they have uh, consular access as well as are being well treated. And this has been a long process for them and uh, they're, they're in my mind today as well as their families. And we're also very keenly aware that they are being held arbitrarily. They are being held in detention. Uh, the, the charges we believe to be groundless and that a host of international partners are echoing that, not just Mike Pompeo in the United States, but the UK, Germany, Latvia, Estonia. We are, uh, the international community is, uh, is extremely um, uh, upset with this uh, uh, matter of events that has transpired and we'll continue to, to push for the release. We know that it is linked to a, a decision that we made as a, as a society to follow international rules-based order, in, or rule of law country, uh, with an extradition case that the whole world is watching that we, we follow appropriately our rules. That's what we're doing. We um, know okay. those are linked. But to get to Huawei, no. Uh, that will be a decision that's made it what is in the best interest for Canada and Canadians. And that is, we don't link these issues together. That is an issue that will absolutely be taken on its merit to determine what is best security right. uh, for Canadians. Look, I understand you can't link it because you don't make, want to make it political. But Garnet Genius, it's got to inform the decision because if China's acting like this because we're following an extradition treaty, then you've got to wonder what they could do if they had the power in our 5G, what they might be able to do. But do you think Canada's policy vis-a-vis -vis China has to change given the charges against the two Michaels, Mr. Genius? Our, our policy towards China absolutely needs to change. And there are many different challenging issues in the context of our relationship with China, but all of those issues are informed by the reality of what the Xi Jinping regime is. And it's different from the approach of the Chinese government even as recently as, as five or six years ago. Uh, what you're seeing is uh, aggressive action contrary to human rights and international law in Hong Kong, aggressive action over the border with India, uh, concerns of uh, cyber attacks on other countries in Asia, uh, the, uh, the, these charges against uh, detained Canadians, this kind of continuing hostage diplomacy. All of these issues should inform our understanding of what the Chinese state is doing. And yet, the Liberal government here has been unwilling to say no to Huawei, even though all of our allies are there at this point. Uh, we're still uh, in a position of having put hundreds of millions of dollars into the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. We're worried about uh, the aggressive actions of the Chinese state, and yet we're funding it through the AIIB. Uh, we, uh, we just saw from a June 4th disclosure uh, from the Minister of Foreign Affairs that he had two personal mortgages uh, with the state-owned Bank of China. And the Liberal chair of the Canada-China Committee has refused to call the committee to meet, despite the fact that a majority of members of that right. committee, including Mr. Harris on this panel, want the committee to be able to meet and do its work. So there's a need for recalibration. There's a need for Parliament to be involved. And unfortunately, on this broad swath of issues with China, the Liberal government has just got its head in the sand. 
Uh, Mr. Harris, you're on that uh, China-Canada committee. Um, the, look, Canada has been trying to rally international support. Is it a good sign that Mike Pompeo has made such a very strong statement against China? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a good start. Uh, the fact that they did come out with, uh, with a very strong statement is helpful. Uh, you know, last week I, I was urging that a, a, a strategy of getting uh, you know, it wasn't enough to just say you were concerned. You had to work to get other like-minded people throughout the world to work together to make meaningful pressure put on China. Uh, this is a start. It's only a statement as it stands right now. Uh, but we, we do need more. Canada can't do this alone. We, even the suggestion that you put forward of... of uh, making a statement by uh, doing something with Huawei, uh, Huawei's plans for 5G, uh, I don't think that that's, a, you know, that's a, a political approach. We've tried to maintain an objective decision about this. We have, we're waiting patiently for the government to, to talk more about this, and perhaps they could be more open in informing us what the issues are or let us hear from some of the people. Uh, the Canada-China Committee should be meeting now, and I'm disappointed that the, the chair and the government hasn't facilitated that. Uh, I'd like to see that happen. Because some of the things that uh, Garnet is talking about, I don't agree with everything that Mr. Genio says, uh, obviously. But the uh, the fact that there are things going on, the reason for the Canada-China Committee is about the larger relationship. Uh, the what we've been dealing with, unfortunately, is the, is the very deplorable. Uh, situation with Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig being detained arbitrarily. There's no question that that's, that's motivated by what happened to Wang Mei. We've been that's acting right. in a non-political way all along, so it's very difficult to be objective about it, but we, we do have to move uh, forward and we do have to have our allies to help us. Mr. Olafek, can you confirm, did your government specifically ask Mike Pompeo to release this statement? And is the statement all the U.S. is going to do, or can you tell us that the U.S., in their own negotiations with China, are actively linking their trading relationship to the release of the two Michaels? I'm obviously not privy to those conversations. If they took place or not, I don't know. Uh, what I do know is the United States has strongly supported uh, Canada ever since Michael Kovig and uh, Michael Spaver were detained, uh, as has the U.K., as has Germany, other countries. Uh, they have constantly supported us, and, and when charges were formally laid, I was not at all surprised that Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, made a strong statement. Uh, the international community is outraged. Sorry, sorry, can I just interrupt? I just, uh, Mr. Oliphant, I just want to clarify. La I think it was uh, December of 2019, however, it was uh, the President of the United States actively linked this to a political decision, saying if China would give the U.S. a trade deal, he would drop the charges against Meng Wanzhou. Doesn't that make it more difficult to pretend this is not political when the President of the United States has actively made that link? I won't speak for the United States or the American president. What I know is that the Canadian government, we are not naive about this issue. We have our eyes wide open about China. I would, I would tell Garner that we are constantly vigilant about what is in the best interest of Canada and Canadians in every aspect of the Canada-China relationship. That includes trade, that includes human rights, that in, includes uh, any decision about Huawei, that includes every decision we have about China will be if what is in the best interest of Canada and Canadians. With eyes wide open, we are simply not naive, nor will we uh, react uh, arbitrarily. We will constantly and persistently act in Canada's best interest. Rob, I think Canadians would have a I lot more confidence of that, of that if, uh, if our foreign affairs minister would sell those mortgages. I want to know why we only <laughs> saw the full disclosure on them on June the 4th of this yeah, year that is and why he hasn't shown up uh, in, the, Garnet, in the House of Commons to answer questions on it. Garnet, that is irresponsible on your part. The reality is that... Uh, you, so should, you should support the I committee have, coming together so we can ask him those questions. He, he should answer those questions himself. I don't want to play a game with you, Garnet. The, the reality is every mortgage should, we have, every asset we have as members of Parliament is publicly disclosed. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has disclosed all his assets, completely transparent. That is the requirement of the legislation. He has fulfilled I, it. Yeah, and, and, it and then Canadians can see that now as of June the 4th and draw their own conclusions. This is his most complicated right. file, and you're telling me uh, that he doesn't I, I, have his okay. head in the sand, that he... But, but he won't come to committee. Let, let, to I don't the want questions. to lose sight of the fact. 
I, I will just say this, um, just on the mortgages, not take a position, just I want to inject a fact in here. Uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs did disclose all this. It was not, it was public, although the public wasn't aware of it. He did disclose it to the Ethics Commission, but I got to leave it there. Mr. Harris, yeah, Mr. On June the 4th. and uh, Mr. Oliphant. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Uh, all, all of you joining us. Now, the key is, will anything change for the two Michaels who are charged? That's, we got to keep our eye on the ball there. Thanks, gentlemen. Here's some news that